initiative. It has started. Let's take you there now live. General Secretary Dr. Pledin Zimande will present the statement of the key outcomes of the Central Committee meeting held on Friday and Saturday. We have uh, national office bearers of the party present. Let me introduce them as follows. Comrade Joyce Murray Moroba is the national treasurer of the SACP. Comrade Chris Makaku is the second deputy general secretary of the SACP. Comrade Tulas Nwesi, who we should hold accountable for our arrest, Pirot, is the deputy national chair of the SACP. Comrade Solima Paila will be joining us in due course. So we will start before he joins us so that the session becomes a success. He has a technical uh, uh, issue. Our national chairperson, Comrade Senzeni Zokwana, has been given a leave of absence. We also have uh, the head of the office of the secretariat or general secretary, Comrade Jenny Schreiner. And we have uh, our support staff, Comrade Zoto Mudiha and Stembiso Bengu. The latter, uh, Dr. Stembizo Bengu, is based at the Chris Hani Institute as the director. Let me take this opportunity to invite the General Secretary to present the statement of the key outcomes of the Central Committee meeting. Following the presentation, we will take questions from the media and answer them. After answering the last question, we will switch over to a brief statement on the launch of our crowdfunding initiative. We'll deal with it when we get there. May I ask Comrade Shengza uh, Reloaded to mute yourself? And Comrade Stembiso uh, Bengu to please mute all those who did not mute themselves because they appear on the screen and also live on television. May you kindly mute uh, Comrade Kengiwe Nkonyan. Uh, General Secretary, please, uh, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, Comrade Alex, the office bearers of the party, and members of the media who have joined us. Let me welcome you. The SACP Central Committee met on Friday and Saturday, 18th to 19th of December 2020. We convened the last plenary session of the Central Committee to, for the year, to evaluate 2020 and adopt the 2021 program of action. The Central Committee expressed its condolences to all the families and relatives who lost their loved ones due to COVID-19 and as a result also of the scourge of gender-based violence. As we concluded our Central Committee meeting yesterday, over 902,000 people were recorded to have contracted the virus in the country since March this year. The majority, over 784,000 recovered, while 24,285 died because of COVID-19 related uh, illnesses. The SACP welcomes and commits to actively support the festive season measures announced by President Ramaphosa this week, last week, sorry, to combat COVID-19. We urge the working class and all South Africans to comply with the COVID-19 regulations and basic hygiene measures, especially also in the light of the threat of a second surge of infections. The Central Committee declared the SACP Centenary Year 2021, 
we're turning 100 next year. We have declared it the year of mass activism by the working class and poor, whilst at the same time strictly observing COVID-19 preventative protocols. And we will do this mainly through localized actions. In this year of mass activism, we'll be guided by our theme, Put People Before Profits. And this will involve, as a main objective, the forging of a broad popular left front and also to enhance the capacity of the working class generally to increase in influence in society, especially in the light of what we see as a neoliberal onslaught and its austerity agenda, and also to mobilize the working class against corruption and against generally the undermining of its own interests. And we will elaborate shortly on these. The SACP 2021 Program of Action will encapsulate our Red October campaign 2020 to 2021 objectives, which is eradication of hunger, health care for all, human settlements and water. The objectives of our program of action will also include deepening the campaign against interpersonal and gender-based violence and the campaign against retrenchment. We will also focus on supporting the implementation of the progressive pillars of the Economic Reconstruction and Recovery Program as supported by the Network Labour business and community constituencies and announced by President Ramaphosa earlier in the year. In supporting increased investment into infrastructure, which is a key pillar of the Economic Reconstruction and Recovery Program, that, is, that also includes social infrastructure, the SACP will seek to work with its allies in support of infrastructure investments the wider labor movement, community, and broader democratic movement, also in order to embark on a campaign to protect community infrastructure. The Central Committee expressed its serious concerns at what we see as growing vandalization and sometimes destruction of public property and infrastructure protests. That we need to mobilize against. In this age of the deepening and widening technological revolution, we need public infrastructure to bridge the, div the digital divide, close the gap in access to information and communications technology as, as an important component of advancing development. This includes ensuring public control over the broadband spectrum. Part of our campaign of placing people before profits is to say we are against the privatization of broadband spectrum. And over and above that, we would like, as the South African Communist Party, to see spectrum reserved for community use, including for social purposes like education and public health. The Central Committee has placed emphasis in this development imperative for our centenary program in 2021. We will therefore also include intensification of the campaign for access to Wi-Fi, including free access, especially in working class and poor communities, with rural areas being given equal attention as urban areas. The problems of persisting underdevelopment, including the lack of access to connectivity exposed by COVID-19, when schools, colleges, and universities shifted learning and teaching to the digital space, cannot be left unresolved. In fact, COVID-19 has further exposed us in terms of inequality of access to connectivity. Neither should the idea that profit-driven interests are an answer to connectivity and affordable mobile data. 
The forces of private wealth accumulation in the ICT industry, over and above the pre-COVID-19 high mobile data charges, made a killing from exploiting the COVID-19 lockdown regulations when most organizations and individuals shifted to the digital space for purposes of work, including education and training. In fact, the Central Committee noted with concern reports by Oxfam, amongst others, that the profits of the dollar billionaires in the world rose by $1 trillion just this year during COVID-19 lockdown period. And the main beneficiaries have been the big ICT companies who have made a killing. As the SACP, we are concerned that COVID-19 has actually exacerbated inequalities in societies across the globe. And it's something that in our own country we want to take up to campaign for better access. The SACP will convene an education session and conference early next year to reflect on curriculum transformation and how to achieve equal education in the basic education sector, the development of and support for the technical and vocational education and training colleges, and transformation in universities, including transformation in the innovation research and development landscape. This session on education which we will convene will also pay equal attention to the imperative of driving a skills revolution, considering continuously expanding advances in the deepening and widening of the technological re revolution. The SACP will invite its allies, other progressive formations, and relevant authorities to participate at this session. Let me now turn to other resolutions of the Central Committee to further elaborate on 2021 as our centenary year of mass activism and placing people before profits. The Central Committee talked about what we call the fourfold crisis facing capitalism today which is COVID-19, the second one, the deepening economic crisis, the third one, the crisis, what we call the crisis of social reproduction, which we'll explain further later, and the catastrophic crisis of climate change. As South Africa, we are facing the, the same challenges. On the COVID-19 pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic has entered the second wave in South Africa and other countries. Just after adjourning on the first day of our Central Committee on Friday, the government through the Department of Health and the Department of Science and Innovation, together with scientists, announced that there is a new, more transmissible variant of COVID-19 in South Africa, and which has a high viral load. It was discovered that the new variant has a profound expression in the second surge of COVID-19 pandemic underway. The Department of Science and Innovation supported and funded this scientific research process that has led to this discovery. In participating in this press conference, I myself, on behalf of government and my department in that instance, I pledged continued support for the scientific research to monitor the mutation of the virus as part of the wider government effort to contain the spread of COVID-19. The Central Committee then joined Dr. Mkise, the Minister of Health, in his call to all the people in South Africa to comply with the COVID-19 preventative measures, as announced by President Cyril Ramaphosa on the 14th of December, 2020. And as the SACP, we are pledging our own support to these initiatives. The Central Committee re reiterated the SACP's call for more decisive implementation of the National Health Insurance. Immediate implementation of the NHI, as we call it, is essential for the success of our national effort to contain 
the spread of COVID-19 and prepare the country to overcome any future pandemic outbreaks. The struggle for a national health insurance will be an important component of the SACP's 2021 program of action, our centenary year, to ensure that indeed, as a country, we do put people before profits. The SACP calls upon the World Health Organization to ensure that COVID-19 vaccine development is geared towards making the COVID-19 vaccine universally accessible as a public good. As the COVID-19 global pandemic crisis demonstrably underlined, any neglect of one part of the world will affect the entire world. So there must be equitable distribution of the vaccine worldwide. The Central Committee further denounced unscientific utterances promoting conspiracy theories and quakery, to be quite honest, against scientific vaccine development. Having in the past as a country gone through a devastating period of AIDS denialism, we cannot allow another bout of dangerous vaccine denialism and anti-vaccine postures. The COVID-19 pandemic has further exposed and deepened the capitalist crisis of high levels of inequality, unemployment, and poverty in our country. South Africa recorded a slight recovery in its gross domestic product for the third quarter as a result of easing its lockdown. While this is important, the reality, however, is that South Africa is yet to recover the 2.2 million jobs lost in the second quarter of 2020 and more other jobs that have been lost thereafter as the capitalist bosses continue to retrench workers, largely in protection of their profits. The jobs created in the third quarter are too far away from overcoming the damage caused by the pandemic. The Central Committee further committed to something that we regard as very important, that the SACP must campaign for the development and incorporation of measures of inequality, unemployment, and poverty reduction as key indicators against which we must all judge economic progress in our country. This is important. So that we don't just rely on a generalized notion of GDP or GDP per capita, whilst levels of poverty, inequality, and unemployment remain entrenched. We say this, by the way, as the SACP, because in the past, South Africa has had very high periods of GDP growth, but accompanied by rising unemployment and rising levels of inequality and poverty. So GDP as a measure on its own is far from adequate we are calling for now, talking about measuring the performance of our economy. We must have indicators all the time that tell us about levels of employment or unemployment, poverty levels, and inequality. So that also we talk a simple language to the people of our country on how our economy is doing. On the crisis of social reproduction, which really is about the struggle by households, families, and communities to make ends meet. Central Committee pointed out that because of the capitalist crisis of inequality, unemployment, and poverty, many working class and poor households have been struggling to support life itself. The withdrawal of the COVID-19 Social Relief of Distress Grant early next year will see many of its beneficiaries sink deeper into destitution without any mitigation. The implications for the government and society at large of the combined effects of the persisting high levels of inequality, unemployment, and poverty, and the impact of social reproduction crisis are unimaginable. It is therefore crucial for the working class to close ranks and confront neoliberalism 
and its austerity agenda. This is one of the key tasks the, the, the Central Committee reaffirmed and underlined for the SACP to deepen. The Central Committee reaffirmed the SACP's call to the entire progressive trade union movement to close ranks, irrespective of their affiliation to federations, and embark on joint actions to advance the collective interests of the workers and the poor in our country. As the SACP will be part of this effort to seek to unite the broader trade union movement to act in concert. While simultaneously campaigning for access to land through a more effective land redistribution program, including security of tenure and the growing of food, the SACP will also campaign for the sustenance of the COVID-19 social relief of distress grant. This will form part of our program of action towards the establishment of a universal income guarantee and the comprehensive social security system that the May 2019 election manifesto of the ANC committed to. Central Committee also spoke about the catastrophic crisis of climate change that continues globally without change, even after the lifting of the lockdown in many countries, without any change in the old environmentally destructive patterns of capitalist production and consumption. Capitalist bosses are interested in profit making and maximization rather than in protecting and reversing climate change, slowing down and stopping global warming and ensuring decent standards of living for the workers, their families, and the community. This underlines our theme for next year, put people before profits. To protect life, working class unity to roll back the catastrophic crisis of climate change is essential. The Central Committee will be identifying South Africa's environmental hotspots, for example, in places like the Wentworth community in Etewin, in Guazulu Natal province, Sasolbeck in the Free State, and the highly polluted Bumalanga province. The SACP will work with communities and progressive environmental NGOs to confront environmental destruction. The Wentworth community, for instance, has for years been fighting a lone battle against the toxic environment they find themselves faced with. This time around, the SACP is drawing a red line. We will support the Wentworth community as well as other communities in their struggle against their environment that is being polluted. Central Committee also spoke at length about the damage caused by state capture and especially the issue of what we see as the destruction of many black professionals. The destruction caused by state capture goes far beyond what many fully realize. One sector of society that has been hugely and negatively affected has been black professionals and managers that we so carefully sought to nurture and grow since 1994. As shown through the Zondo Commission and other commissions of inquiry, as appointed by the president, is that many black professionals have had their careers destroyed or compromised, either through their own collusion, some of them, in corrupt activities, or others being victimized for their principled stance against corruption. This has been the case in many of our state-owned entities and other public institutions, including in places like the public broadcaster, the SABC. In fact, corruption and state capture has caused havoc in destroying careers of many black professionals and managers. It's a matter that we are concerned about as the SACP because we are concerned about building the capacity of the state. 
with competent professionals and managers. State capture and corruption has also involved the forging of patronage networks, paying bribe tax and rent, having due processes manipulated or circumvented, governance decay and mismanagement, the co-opting of professionals and managers, and the other rot exposed through various public investigations. The capture has been at the heart of destroying state capacity. And as I have said, with many black professionals and, and managers as collateral damage. The year 2020 saw some important and significant progress in exposing those involved or complicit in corruption. The Central Committee reaffirmed its support for the work of the Zondo Commission. The SACP is calling for full cooperation from all those called upon to testify or give answers on their role before the commission. We want to distance ourselves completely as the SACP and condemn strongly any grandstanding and attempts to discredit the Zondo Commission. The work of the Zondo Commission is a very crucial part of restoring the moral fiber of our society, including the moral fiber of our own movement and alliance. South Africa needs more decisive action to overcome the damage caused by state capture and corporate malfeasance. We must also emphasize that the reason why the SACP used the concept of corporate capture of the state was also to actually underline the fact that the corruption is not only inside the state, but it's happening in conjunction with corruption that emanates from the private sector. We must deal with this cancer wherever it is, both in the public and private sectors. That's why we are saying they must, that the measures that must be taken to deal with state capture and corruption must be wide ranging in scope, even also including, by the way, the role played by multinational corporations, some of whom now are trying to give us a sword by saying they are going to pay back. Yes, they must pay back, but that is not enough. We need to know more and the culprits must be dealt with. We cannot as a country be allowed to be bought, much as it is important to pay that money back, but we want much more serious action. The SACP has warned before that it is incorrect and we reject the allegation that the whole of the ANC is corrupt or the whole of the state is corrupt. Nevertheless, we have warned that unless corruption and corporate capture were dealt with severely and decisively, these problems risk becoming systemic and difficult to reverse. The SACP also supports the stance taken by the ANC that all those charged with corruption before the courts of law should step aside until their names are cleared. We'll do the same as the SACP as well. In the same manner, South Africans should not ignore the charges brought against the public protector for perjury in a court of law. There is no reason in principle why a different standard must apply. The public protector, especially also both the office and any incumbent, must act according to the law. And any damning court judgments against the public protector now requires serious action as well as serious and honest reflection about the manner in which this office is operating and the manner in which it has been found wanting. South Africa needs a capable and honest public protector and not the one who's actually had some damning judgments against it. So action must be taken against anyone, anywhere, in line with our commitment to root out malfeasance in society. Neoliberalism and its austerity agenda, on the one hand, and sustained corruption through state capture networks, on the other hand, are bedeviling economic reconstruction and recovery in our country. Central Committee reflected very deeply on these matters that in fact what we are facing 
are twin dangers at this point in time. That of neoliberalism on the one hand, together with its austerity agenda, and state capture and its corruption networks on the other. And these terrible twins actually run the risk of reversing the many gains we've made over the last 26 years of our democratic dispensation. Fiscal consolidation through austerity, or austerity through fiscal consolidation, whatever fancy name you call it, results in a common outcome. That of cuts in budgets affecting social and other developmental spending with negative consequences for economic development. The agenda was, and still is, unfortunately, that is supporting neoliberal policy emanating from the national treasury. The SACP has consistently stated its displeasure that some of these policies being pursued are a copy and paste from the neoliberal policies as advanced by the Paris-based OECD and the Washington-based International Monetary Fund. Just as the SACP said in the wake of the adoption of GEAR in 1996, neoliberal policies are wholly inappropriate for a country like South Africa, and they are not an answer to the huge developmental challenges that we face as a country. The budget cuts to fund SAA, for instance, were also deliberately designed to provoke outrage that spares on the privatization agenda as an alternative to fiscal funding of state-owned enterprises. While the ANC and the Alliance called for support to ensure that the SAA business rescue process becomes successful, we never said National Treasury must cut the budgets for social services and other developmental imperatives. The budgeting process reflected more than anything else this attempt to impose a neoliberal policy like it happened in 1996 and an austerity agenda. It is the SACP's considered view, as articulated by the Central Committee, that a radical transformation of the national treasury to rid it of its neoliberal paradigm is essential. And as the SACP Central Committee decided, we are going to be squarely placing this issue on the agenda for priority discussion in our alliance. The austerity agenda is being pushed also through the counter application in the public service and administration wage bill dispute, culminating in the judgment delivered by the Labour Appeal Court this week, which to us as the SACP deals a serious blow to South Africa's collective bargaining system. While we respect the judiciary, the reality is that this judgment does not represent a shadow of the resolution of this dispute, unfortunately, as the primary problem remains. The SACP expressed its ex ex active solidarity with and will continue its active support for the workers. This will include support for the trade union movement and also approaches to the Constitutional Court. Should the matter remain unresolved, the SACP will support the united action of the labor movement in calling for fresh negotiations to ensure that there is a collective bargaining agreement covering the affected period of wage adjustments. The Central Committee put it very strongly, its view, that it is better for all parties or for both parties in the public sector dispute to engage rather than to embark on actions that threaten the collective bargaining system that South Africa's working class spent decades fighting for and out of which serious sacrifices were made. In other words, as the SACP, we are of the view, irrespective of the outcome of any court case, it's not going to resolve the fundamental problem of the necessity to engage. While we respect the judiciary and its independence, as we have said, the Central Committee disagrees with the comments of the Labour Appeal Court simplistically likening wage adjustments for workers to social grants. Important as social grants are, wage increases are a right or at least an entitlement based on the rendering of the required labour in return for remuneration. The challenge for negotiations 
in both the public and the private sector in a period of hardship must not be compounded by the very by the threats posed to the institution of collective bargaining. On the economic reconstruction and recovery program, the success of the government's economic reconstruction and recovery plan lies in its potential to overcome the persisting high levels of inequality, unemployment, and poverty, thus relieving many households and families from the pressures of being unable to put food on the table. We are very pleased that this economic reconstruction and recovery program has and also continues to be consulted upon by the social partners at NETLEC. More of these consultations are needed to ensure economic reconstruction, recovery, and development so that we are able to confront the challenges of inequality, unemployment, and poverty. The SACP welcomes the prioritization of infrastructure spending in the economic reconstruction and recovery program. However, reliance on financialization, to put it differently and simply, reliance on problematic ways of funding infrastructure or lack of investment into infrastructure as a result of the investment strike by the financial sector will prove to be a problem. The SACP calls upon government to take measures to put pressure on the financial sector to release the billions, if not trillions of rents of monies in pension and retirement funds that remain uninvested. In fact, if there is one crime against the people of South Africa by the financial sector, is the trillions and trillions of rents that remain uninvested when the country's productive economy is battling and when we are facing such high levels of unemployment. This includes the monies that are in pension and retirement funds that remains uninvested. The SACP is concerned that unlike the international norm, South Africa invests only about 2% of its retirement funds into infrastructure development. The SACP also calls upon the public investment corporations, which is work handling public sector workers' pension funds to invest into infrastructure development. And also other developmental financial institutions like the Industrial Development Corporation and the Development Bank of Southern Africa must prioritize investment into infrastructure and the productive sectors of our economy. The Central Committee was of the view that by and large, the financial sector has been left to get away with murder. Its poor handling of the COVID-19 state guaranteed loan scheme further exposed the financial sector and its lack of will to invest in a manner that supports our economic development priorities. The Central Committee committed the SACP to intensify the financial sector transformation campaign in 2021 to ensure that the financial sector is pushed towards investing its resources in a manner that will enable us as a country to develop. On local government elections scheduled to take place in 2021, Central Committee noted the engagements that took place in the alliance on the local government elections taking place later next year. The Alliance Secretariat agreed to allow the SACP and COSATU time to consult internally with their structures and return to Alliance discussions before the start of the next election campaign processes for further engagements. Central Committee welcomed the outcome of the ANC's last NEC meeting that committed to serious engagement within the alliance on matters relating to the forthcoming local government elections. One thing is certain for us, a united ANC-led alliance electoral contest depends on the elections candidates' selections guideline that reflect the letter and the spirit of the alliance reconfiguration processes. As per the SACP and COSATU joint statement, 
after our bilateral meeting that we issued on the 1st of December 2020. As the two working class formations in the alliance, we are at one on the necessity for a reconfigured alliance and inclusive alliance electoral processes. The SACP will convene an election preparatory session early next year to finalize our own consultations on the local government, elections candidates, election guidelines, and on its other preparations for the forthcoming local government elections. In this regard, we will be guided by our special national congress resolutions adopted in December 2019, that as the SACP will not accept or support candidate councillors that are imposed on communities or that are corrupt or candidates that are emanating from factional slates. We must also say we welcome the ANC's commitment that any candidate councillor who is implicated in gender-based violence will be removed from the list of the ANC. So shall we do so also as the SACP on any communists who are on ANC list who are accused of gender-based violence. They won't, we won't support them and they must be removed from the candidates list as part of our commitment to fight the scourge. The Central Committee will further spell out on how to deal with such cases where unpopular or corrupt candidates are being imposed on us. The last issue that the Central Committee spoke about related to international solidarity. Central Committee expressed its ongoing solidarity with the people of Swaziland who are struggling for democracy and the people of Zimbabwe who are facing a monumental economic crisis as well as the people of Somaliland. The SACP calls for an end to all wars on the African continent in favor of peace, peaceful settlement of disputes. We also strongly support as the SACP, the African Union's commitment to silence the guns of our, on our continent. Central Committee denounced in the strongest possible terms the proclamation signed by the outgoing United States President, Mr. Donald Trump, wanting to recognize the so-called sovereignty of Morocco over Western Sahara in exchange for Morocco establishing full diplomatic relations with the apartheid Israeli regime. Central Committee expressed solidarity with the people of Western Sahara and Palestine and called upon Morocco and Israel to end their respective occupation of Western Sahara and Palestinian territories. SACP Central Committee also congratulates the left in Kerala, including the Communist parties of India, for their decisive victories in the recently held elections, and also congratulated the Movement for Socialism for its electoral victory in Bolivia. In conclusion, the Central Committee urged the global community, including the United States of America, Canada, and the European Union, to respect the outcomes of Venezuela's elections for its National Assembly, and the SACP also expressed its solidarity with the Venezuelan people and its Bolivarian revolution. I thank you very much. Thank you, Gias. We will now be taking questions, uh, if there are any. I would like to just say to our media colleagues, uh, you use the panel to raise your hand, and we will promote you to the panelists to ask your question. We are running on multiple platforms, uh, which we are monitoring for, for questions. Uh, uh, we have uh, the first question uh, on the WhatsApp platform uh, asked by Sophie Mukwena from the SABC, the SABC foreign editor. I will read it uh, aloud. Uh, vaccine nationalism is a big challenge to the poorer countries. Is the SACP engaging its international alliance partners 
particularly socialist countries, to assist? That is a very important question. Are you engaging with China, Cuba, Vietnam, and other countries where left formations are in government to assist, given the fact that vaccine nationalism, which we can already see underway, is a challenge. So that is the first question. So the second question is from Samgelo Maseko. I will ask uh, Stembiso Bengu to promote Samgelo Maseko to the panelist uh, window so that he can ask the question. Yes, Samgelo, welcome. You can ask uh, a question. Thank you. thank you very much, Mr. Mashilo. Just a quick question to the Central Committee and in particular the GS. Is the Central Committee calling for the removal of the public protector advocate, Mrs. William Kobani, upon those perjury uh, charges that uh, we have seen that have been instituted against Angel Henderson over to the courts on the 21st of January? And then secondly, we have seen that one of your alliance partners who sits in the alliance secretariat, that would be the Secretary General of the ANC, has been charged and uh, the Integrity Commission has recommended that he step aside. Do you, as the Central Committee, call on the Secretary General of the African National Congress, Ace Mahashule, to step aside with immediate effect? And uh, would this not uh, cause another eruption within the ANC, like we saw heading towards the 2007 Polokwane conference between former President uh, Tabon Peki and his then Deputy Jacob Zuma in that standoff that uh, fractured the ANC? Thank you. Thank you, Samkelo, for your forthrightness and a sharp question. It is these type of questions that we need in order to clarify our stance or enhance what we say in our statements uh, robustly. Uh, comrade uh, Solima Paila, Second Deputy General Secretary of the SACP, joined us just after we have started. I would welcome him. And I will take this opportunity. Uh, is the is the first deputy general secretary I can see, Comrade Chris is in or uh, Alex. Uh, you are now uh, uh, pushing a coup d'état because I'm the second deputy general secretary. <laughs> it is not a coup, uh, Comrade uh, Chris. It is uh, the slip of the tongue. Let me allow you, as national office bearers of the SACP, to answer the two important, the three important questions. Uh, thank you, uh, Comrade Alex. Uh, mm -hmm. on, on, the, on the question by Sofim Kwena, mm -hmm. I will give to Comrade Soli and Comrade Chris, once I finish answering the other one, to perhaps come in on the SACP's interaction with our allies on the vaccine. All I can say in this regard is that the SACP does support government's effort to engage all the countries that have got the potential or are in the process of developing the vaccine, including our BRICS allies, Russia and, and, and China. Government is engaging actively with those and indeed also with other initiatives that are there so that we make sure that we are able to have access to vaccine. The SACP supports that and would urge government to continue to engage uh, internationally with all the areas that potentially can give us a vaccine. But I will leave the SACP's own initiatives to the two, to my two uh, co-secretaries. On the issue of uh, the ANC someday, well, let me start with the public protector. We have already said that this public protector is not up to standard. The way she has been behaving, we are being vindicated now by the courts, does not befit the office of a public protector. We have called, in fact, for us, what we are saying, it would be good for the public protector just to do the obvious and the right thing by stepping down. Otherwise, we support the process of examining her fitness to hold office. Some of the judgments that have been made, frankly, should be embarrassing to anyone who regards himself or herself as a law-abiding and someone driven by the, by the rule of law. 
On the issue of the ANC Secretary General, look, some guy, we want to say the SACP, we will respect the processes of the African National Congress. As allies, we are careful that we do not enter into what are internal processes of the ANC. What we support is the ANC's stance that whoever is charged for serious uh, crimes or other malfeasance in courts of law must step aside. It's an example that we will follow ourselves as the SACP. Because somebody also must be careful. I know the media loves this. We must be careful that resolutions of our organizations must not be given a name in the Senate. To say, no, this resolution is aimed at blatant demand. This resolution, its implementation is aimed at so and so. Resolutions must be implemented irrespective of who is involved. What we are saying is that we support the ANC resolution that anyone who is charged must step aside. And we hope that the ANC will implement its own resolutions in the manner that it should implement them. Maybe also my colleagues may want to add on this and my comrades. Thank you, GS. Uh, let me invite uh, <clears throat> the other national office bearers of the SACP. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Mashilo. Uh, I think the first one on the integrity, no, no, on the va vaccine, uh, the integrity one uh, the GS has dealt with. On the vaccine, uh, particularly from our international allies in the socialist movement, uh, is to appreciate that uh, President Xi Jinping of China was the first to pronounce, without uh, being engaged by us, that there will be proportionate distribution of the vaccine to the rest of the world. And only a socialist country could have uh, taken such kind of an initiative. And we have also noticed his engagement with uh, the AU and the BRICS uh, countries and reiterating this commitment uh, to make sure that people worldwide uh, are able to share in the scientific outcome in the development of the vaccine. Uh, the same as in Russia. We have seen that uh, when Russia uh, developed uh, its vaccine, the Sputnik, it was able to indicate that this will be made available to the world not necessarily chasing profits. Of course, Russia is not a, a socialist country, but I think the values of common humanity and uh, ran through as they made this particular pronouncement. But of course, the world um, condemned uh, the Russian vaccine because uh, it, this is a, there's been a competition about who produces the vaccine, who sell it more at the world market. But uh, you can see the difference between some of those countries, uh, whether it's China, Russia, even Vietnam. The Vietnamese are the ones that we haven't uh, directly engaged on the specifics of the, of the vaccines, but uh, it's, it's a process that uh, we can continue to engage with them. But the others, I think, they've uh, expressed the willingness to share with the world um, uh, this vaccine. The same as Cuba. Cuba is inferon 2B, uh, which has been quite effective worldwide. And in fact, uh, we have called, as you know, uh, for at the beginning of this pandemic, that South Africa should have actually acquired more from Cuba, actually assist them to produce more and help in saving the world. So Inferon 2B has been better than what was uh, utilized in other countries or even here at home. But the Medical Council, of course, uh, will take its own uh, yes uh, just to, 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 to give it license. Uh, when they, they, will, they will not do the same with uh, European medicine, but that's that that's that's va vaccine that uh, uh, not not necessarily vaccine, but palliative medication that has been uh, useful as antiviral medication. That the Cuban doctors who have led the front line in attacking the pandemic worldwide have been utilizing, and that could have also saved more lives uh, also in our country. But we will continue to engage with them to look into possibilities, but governments have to come on board uh, to support those initiatives by progressive countries. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, comrades. So the one thing I like about questions from Mesofunuko and at the SABC is the international perspective 
loaded in those questions. That uh, resonates very well with the character of the SACP as an internationalist formation. And I can't stop thinking here uh, for bringing about that perspective always when asking questions. Let me announce to our friends and comrades who are watching uh, on Facebook, I can see you have commented, you have so many comments, you are also allowed from the media side to ask questions uh, on that platform and we will read out those questions. Let me check if there is any further addition. We are also live on the Jack Simon Party School Facebook page and the, SABC, the SACP Facebook page and live on SABC 404 uh, news channel. Uh, let me check if there are any additions from the, of the party office bearers. If there are no additions, I will ask the general secretary to prepare himself uh, for the next statement on the launch of the crowdfunding initiative. Following that statement, we will play short video clips and follow the program and close shortly to allow the media colleagues to file their stories. Are there any additions from the party office bearers? Yes, I see there is a question. Uh, uh, Samkelo Maseko wants to follow up on the question he asked. I will allow him to do so. Uh, Samkelo calls himself the Lord of the Media. I like that name as well. And I saw a debate whether it should not be given to someone else. What I like about what you did, Samkele, is that you gave yourself the name. So uh, the lot of the media, the platform is yours now. <laughs> Good, Alex. <laughs> no, uh, yes. On the issue of uh, the former president, uh, former president Jacob Zuma, he's written a letter to uh, the state capture commission of inquiry uh, through his lawyers that he would not be participating any further when it comes to the litigation issues that uh, were issued against him by essentially walking out of the state capture commission of inquiry what do you make of the former president essentially snubbing and daring uh, the national executive committee of the african national congress which uh, came out and said all members and leaders of the party must uh, comply and must assist and desist from uh, attacking the deputy chief uh, justice and the chairperson of the state capture commission of inquiry what do you make of the former president essentially snubbing and moving against the very same state capture commission of inquiry which he instituted uh, as the former president of the republic of south africa and he chose the deputy chief justice raymond zondo when the chief justice uh, Mohueng Mohueng presented him with three names to chair the State Capture Commission of Inquiry. What do you make of that and what do you make of him essentially defying the highest making uh, body of uh, the governing party which he once led for over 10 years? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sam Kelo. One thing I like about your questions, because I follow you uh, at uh, all press conferences, uh, as we are colleagues in the media, is that you are historical. You, you, you present a historical perspective behind your question and you are assertive. And that, in fact, uh, and you uh, the name Lord of the Media. So let me invite uh, the party office bearers to answer your, your question, your sharp question. Yes. Well, the, the answer, Alex, is very brief and straightforward to some degree. And in fact, this is not only the position of the, of the SACP. The whole alliance, collectively and individually, the alliance components, all of them have called on everyone to respect and cooperate with the Zondo Commission. Everyone, including everyone, including President Zuma, is being urged by ourselves as the SACP and in terms also of the decisions made by the Alliance to cooperate with the Zondo Commission. In fact, the Central Committee went further and actually denounced all those who are trying to discredit the Zondo Commission, that we must not do that. So the answer is simple. We urge everyone, irrespective of your current or your previous position or station in life, to cooperate with the Zondo Commission. That's our position. 
Thank you, uh, GS. Uh, thank you, colleagues, for 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 the sharp questions. Uh, I enjoyed the twin questions from Samkelo Maseko and uh, Sophie Mukwena. And uh, they go in a pack in that way, even at uh, other press briefings. One thing we missed today, which they normally do at ANC press briefings, is that some girl will raise the hand and then Sophie will speak and say it is Sophie, as they normally work from the same platform. Thank you very much from, for those questions. Let me invite the GS or Comrade Joyce Molloy Moruba to direct our crowdfunding launch program, after which we will uh, close the session. And the chairperson is here, um, okay. he can always do that. But what we need to do now, without a waste of time, is just to go to the GS and request the GS to just make a statement so that we proceed. Thank you, GS. The platform is yours. Uh, Comrade Tulas, uh, Nessie, you are here. The platform is officially yours. Uh, I will behave myself out. Now Comrade, I'm under your authority. Comrade Alex, continue facilitating. Thank you. Thank you very much. With the powers vested in me by the chairperson, the deputy chair of the party, I will invite the general secretary to present an opening statement for the crowdfunding launch, uh, the crowdfunding initiative launch statement. Uh, Comrade Alex, thank you very much to you and the office bearers and all those who have joined us. I'm going to be very brief. The SACP has decided to launch what it calls the crowdfunding. In other words, in the first instance, we are mobilizing all the members of the SACP who are able to make a monthly contribution on their own. This is separate from our debit order campaign. People who have signed to make a contribution through their bank accounts but to say, in addition to that, and any others who are members of the SACP, to actually make a monthly contribution as part of mobilizing ourselves to fund ourselves. The SACP as a working class party cannot be able to fund itself unless workers in our country and professionals who are either members of support the SACP are able to make donations and contributions on an ongoing basis. So this crowdfunding is first and foremost directed at our own members to say, every man spare something so that we are able to be self-sufficient. But secondly, we are calling upon all our friends who may not be members of the party and those who are sympathetic or support this or that campaign of the SACP to actually also make a monthly contribution to make the South African Communist Party a sustainable and independent organization. Now, some will ask the question, especially those who may not be members of the party, why should we support, why should I spend a hundred rands or a thousand rands for those who are earning better a month supporting the SACP? The reason is simple. As the SACP, we have been waging campaigns in support of the workers and the poor of our country. Even some of our campaigns, by the way, have been of benefit beyond that to the middle classes who are heavily indebted and even to sections of black business, by the way, who are being done short by, amongst others, the financial sector. The SACP wants to use these resources, for instance, to further our campaign on the transformation of the financial sector so that our people continue not to be victims of the credit bureau, our people continue to have access to finance, our small business are able, without discrimination, to be supported by the banks in order to be able to run their businesses. And the middle classes who are heavily indebted, some of whose houses, by the way, are being repossessed and sold for nothing by the banks. We have been in the forefront as the SACP to say, if 
you you take my house as a bank because I'm unable to 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 afford to pay. Don't sell it for a thousand rand if the house is worth six hundred thousand rand. Sell it for what it's worth. And if in case there is money that gets left, it must go back to the owner of the house. Those are some of the campaigns that we have been waging as the South African Communist Party. Look also, we have been amongst those organizations saying, government said to the banks, we will support you and give you a guarantee to go and guarantee small business so that you can borrow the money in, in, in during this difficult period of COVID-19. What have the banks done? They have hardly really provided any guarantee to small business. And also we are getting feedback that black small business in particular is being discriminated against. As the SACP we have been part of the people, part of the organizations that have also been in the forefront in the fight against gender-based violence. The scourge of violence directed at women is something that all of us must fight against. Help support the SACP so that we are able to strengthen our structures to be able to deal and confront uh, gender-based violence. Those are some of the many activities that as the SACP we are involved in. Right now in the press conference that we have finished, we have also pointed out our other campaigns. One of our big campaigns that we are taking forward next year is the campaign for a national health insurance. That health is a right, is not a privilege. Which also include a campaign to make our people aware that it's very important to live healthy lives. We don't want a health system that is only good at curing people when they are sick. We also want a society that is able to prevent diseases and other sicknesses through living healthy lives as much as is possible. The last thing I would like to mention, which is not the only one, is that the SACP has committed itself to fight against environmental damage. We have highlighted, for instance, that in many parts of our country, we are having unacceptable pollution, like in the Wentworth community of Etewin. The Mpumalanga province is full of toxins as a result and carbon emissions of the mining of coal without due regard to a clean environment. Sasselberg in the free state. We are saying as the SACP, we want to work with NGOs that are working in this in order to be able to ensure that we have a clean environment where our people are living. These are but just some, some of the things that we believe are of benefit to the general South African population. And as the SACP we believe, unless political parties, we are doing this, are also able to stand up to fight for these things, our people will be left on their own. These are some of the reasons why we are saying today, donate on a monthly basis, once off if you feel like, and then at another time we hope you will consider. But on an ongoing basis, to supporting the South African Communist Party. We are a party that stands for socialism, a party that stands for a society ruled by the working class that prioritizes the interests of the working class. But there are many other sectors of society who may not even believe in socialism, but who stand to benefit in a number of these initiatives that we are actually embarking upon as the South African Communist Party. So we are calling upon you, come and support financially given whatever you may have, the South African Communist Party, so that in the end we are able to create a better life for all and a better South Africa for all. Thank you very much. Unmute yourself, Alex. Mm. Thank you very much, Comrade GS. Uh, what is important is that uh, is to bring in the the fundraising campaign into the public sphere and drive it transparently because fundraising had come under pressure recently as if it is illegal in south africa doing it transparently the way you have articulated the statement 
will protect uh, legitimate fundraising and fundraising for legitimate causes. Uh, I will ask uh, Comrade Soli Mabaila, first Deputy General Secretary, to be ready to make closing comments. But before then, I will invite uh, Dr. Stenbiso Bengu to play two to three short videos, to share those short videos with us. These are messages. Dr. Bengu. All right, the uh, SACP Post Central Committee press briefing there on the key outcomes of the meeting and launch of the crowdfunding initiative. We heard uh, from Dr. Blade in Zimande a raft of issues, touching on a raft of issues, saying the Central Committee is urging all South Africans to comply with COVID-19 regulations. He also spoke about the lack of access to connectivity, unequal access to connectivity, saying COVID has well, thrown the spotlight on this issue. He also said the Central Committee denounced unscientific utterances uh, promoting conspiracy theories against scientific vaccine development, going on to say that uh, we cannot afford another bout of dangerous vaccine denialism and anti-vaccine development. And the SAB, uh, SACP, uh, we're told, uh, will be also convening an education session and conference early next year to reflect on curriculum transformation and how to achieve equal education in the basic education sector, the development also of the technical and vocational education and training colleges and the transformation uh, in universities. Also spoke about the issue of corruption and the allegations of state capture, going on to say about the public protect in particular, in response to a question uh, by our colleagues there, Samkele Maseko, uh, saying that the public protector is not up to standard. Uh, Dr. Nzamande going further to say that uh, it will be good for the public protector to step down and also touch, uh, touching on the issue of uh, stepping aside with regards to the ANC if uh, one is charged with any serious crimes. You heard the stance that they're taking and also saying that they will do the same as the SACP. All right, we've got a number of stories to cover in the next uh, hour and a half. So stay with us. We're going to take a quick break for now. More news next.